You won't be able to release your tracks until you finish them, but how do you know when the tracks are done and ready to be released? In today's video, you're gonna see a couple of steps that you can apply in all your songs to make sure that your songs are done and ready to be sent off to labels. But before we begin, let me know over here in the comment sections which is the element in your songs that you struggle with the most when trying to get your song done. Let us know over here in the comments below and let's get started with this video. Let's go. The first thing that I do whenever I want to make sure that my song is ready to be released is compare it to a reference track. And the reason that I do this is essentially to make sure that what I hear in my track is similar to what I like in other tracks as well. And referencing helps me a lot because it makes me understand if my song is either too high, too low, and, or even too much mids. For example, if we go over here to Ableton, listen for example to my track. And this is the reference track. What I hear over here is that maybe the reference track might have a bit too much high end comparing to mine. So I'm gonna first listen to the low end over here. You've just listened to my track, but listen now to the reference. My track, reference, my reference. So you can see that it's pretty similar in the low end, so I'm fine with that and I'm gonna leave it like this. But what about the high end? Now let's go back to Ableton and let's listen to the high end. This is my track. And this is the reference. My track. And reference. So what I'm hearing is that the reference has a bit more highs than mine. And to make sure that what I'm hearing, I'm not being fooled by either my headphones or my speakers, I also use a visual tool called Match EQ by Isotope Ozone that helps me understand if what I'm listening is actually what is happening visually as well. Basically in Match EQ, I listen a little bit to my song so it got the tonal balance of my song. Then I got the tonal balance of the reference and based on that, it calculates what you need to do to be closer to the reference based on these parameters. And and if you look over here, the white line is basically showing what we need to do to be closer to the reference track. And indeed, we need to raise a little bit of the high end over here. We also need to lower a little bit of the mids and raise a little bit of the low end, even though we thought everything was fine in the low end. So that also helps me understand if my song is ready, because if I have too many stuff to be done over here comparing to my reference track, basically that means that I still have stuff to do in my songs. It's important to always compare what you're seeing with what you're listening to make sure that you're either not being fooled by your eyes or by your ears. And essentially, after I get my track to something like this, basically this is a situation that I would consider my track to be fine because the wide line is almost everything below and above 2 dB of difference. So that's my safe zone and that's when I know that I can move on and I can make sure that my songs is ready in other ways. And that takes us to our next point in this video. The second sign that my song is now done and ready to be sent to labels is when I listen to it and I don't have anything to complain about it. Basically, I put it on Ableton and I I listen to everything start to finish even sometimes closing my eyes to make sure that i'm not being enticed by what i see and just being enticed by what i listen but when i listen in this way i don't pay attention only to the little details of the song and i just pay attention to how it makes me feel if anything bothers me while i'm listening to the song i stop what i'm listening to i write down in a list and then i continue listening until i end the song after i end this song i'm gonna have a list of things for me to fix and essentially these are the steps that i need to do until my song is ready since you're already compared and made your song closer to the reference in the first step, this step is going to be basically on the little details and the small things that the song has. But sometimes that can be a little bit overwhelming and you can start overthinking the little details of the song. So how can you stop from overthinking your mix down? Essentially what you have to do is when you make a list of five items, for example, you're going to fix everything and you're going to listen to the song again. And in the second list that you're going to make, it can't be bigger than four items. And in the third list, it can be bigger than three items. Essentially the following list can't be bigger than the previous list because otherwise you're just overthinking yourself. And if you're going through the trap of essentially overthinking your mix, then the next step could be something that helps you as well. Another crucial step for me when finishing my song is asking for feedback from people that I trust. Sometimes what you feel is missing is actually okay. And asking for feedback is a way to make sure that everything is fine. And also sometimes what you feel is okay is actually a problem. And asking for feedback can be a way to discover new problems and also reassure yourself that you going in the right path. And the process is simple. Gather three to five people that you trust and essentially ask for their feedback. After they're given their feedback, you're gonna start making a list of everything that was mentioned. And the third step essentially is fixing what you agree that needs to be fixed. However, there are a couple of situations that I would recommend you to look deeper, even if you don't agree with. 
First, if more than 50% of the people that gave feedback said something about your base, for example, even if you don't agree with it, look into it because you might not be hearing it and that could be an issue to you since it's bothering most of the people that you send your song to. Second, what if only one person said something that bothers you but nobody else said it? Then in this situation, what you can do is just ask the other people right away about this one thing that is bothering you and if it doesn't bother them, then it might not be something that you need to spend your time on. But asking for feedback is a really good way to make sure that what you're doing is resonating with other people that don't have any of the creative bias that you might have when doing your own songs. And then you can say to me, Leo, but I don't have anyone to send my songs to. You can go over here in the description and you can find our link to send your song for feedback and we're gonna listen to it and make sure that you're getting the feedback that you're looking for. But there's one other step that I always recommend you doing that I don't see most producers doing and that takes us to our next point in this video. The last step and it's a crucial step is making sure that what you're listening in your song also translates to the mono signal as well. When listening to your song, it's always gonna sound nicer in stereo, but when you listen to the song in mono, it is simply lax or the main elements of the song disappear, there might be a problem that you should be fixing. For example, when you put your song in mono and your lead or your vocal disappears, definitely make sure to go back to your mix and adjust it in a way that you can listen to them in mono because otherwise when other people listen to your song in mono, it's not gonna hold up and they can be a problem when translating to other speakers as well. But after doing this, what should you do? Lastly, you have to start trusting your gut when finishing your songs. Mixing is so fun when you understand how you can make sure that your song is finished and also you understand how you get your song from unfinished to finished. But a lot of people, even when the song is completely done, they still want to tweak it because they get a little bit into the overthinking mode. If your song is similar to a reference track, if no one is giving feedback to it and you, when you listen to it, you don't fear that you need to change anything, your song is done and you're ready to move on to the next step. However, if you still want to test your songs, there are two ways that I recommend you doing and we're gonna talk about it right now. In addition to all that, you have to make sure that what you're listening on your speakers or on your headphones are translating well to bad speakers as well. I'm going to be clear with you, I never listen to my song in my car, like never. The reason why I do this is because I know my speakers really well and I also listen to the songs on crappy speakers like the JBLs and that suffices my needs because it's essentially a lot more practical. But if you're listening to your song on your speakers or headphones and they're sounding really nice, but on crappy speakers they are sounding bad, there's something that you need to look into. There's definitely something in the first four points of this video that you're probably not doing that much in depth. For example, have you checked your mono signal? Have you compared your song with reference tracks? Have you asked for feedback? Because essentially, if a song is close to a reference track, it will be close to a reference in your car as well, right? Therefore, if that's your case, make sure to go back to the first four points of this video to make sure that what you're doing also translates to other speakers because you don't want your song to be sounding good on one pair of speakers and bad in another pair of speakers as well. Another way to test if your song is ready to be released is by playing it along with other songs in a set. Essentially, if your set is losing quality when you're playing your song, it's probably an indication that you need to fix something in your song. For example, listen to this bit over here when we go from the reference track to my track in the set format. Can we see how when we go from the reference track to my song, we lose a lot of high end? Listen to it again. And if we go over here in Ableton into the EQ match of it, you're gonna see that my song, the yellow one, is really quiet in the high end comparing to the reference track, the blue one. And that's essentially telling me that I need to raise the high end in my song. Therefore, if you don't know if your song is ready to be released, play it along with other songs and that's a really good indication if your song is ready to be released. The more that you practice all these steps, the easier it will be to spot when your song is ready and also when to stop overthinking your song and essentially ruining your mix. And that's why we're talking about this today. But what should you do when you know what needs to be done, but you don't know how to fix everything? In this situation, you can check these videos over here and also this video over here that points out the major mixing problems that I see producers making as well. I hope you liked the video and I hope to see you in the next abstract video next week. Ciao.